So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and today I'm going to have my very first game of Acton Panzer, uh, the new uh, skirmish tank game, small scale tank game from Warlord Games. Um, they very kindly sent me a, an affiliate copy of the rules um, and a set of the cards and tokens. Um, if you're interested in seeing what comes with the tokens and the various force forces, um, check out the video. I'll put a link here in description. So, um, so I'm going to have a go because I think that's the only way to learn the rules. I've read them through a couple of times. Um, got a fairly good basic understanding of what they're involved in, um, but the best ways to play. So I'm going to try um, a Soviet versus a German force. Now mistakes will be made. Um, obviously, uh, <laughs> I make mistakes on rules I've played for years, um, so it's bound to happen on this. Um, but hopefully we can learn as we go along. And if you see anything, please uh, politely point out where I've got it wrong. Um, and um, hopefully next game I can get better. So I'm going to start to this video with assembling the forces. So um, I went with Germans against uh, Soviets because they're basically what I had most of in terms of vehicles. And my problem actually with uh, with uh, Second World War 28 mil tanks is that um, I, I used to play a bit of bolt action, and therefore you only really need one or two tanks here and there. Um, and being a gamer, I've got more than one or two, but I've only got one or two of each type. Um, so sort of uh, what I'm going to have to do if I enjoy this game um, is to make up sort of squadrons of, of the similar sort of tanks to play this game out and Warlords have kindly sent me some kits to do that so I just need to get around to making them so for this game I just thought I'd delve into what I had already had uh, painted up and all ready to go so I've got a Soviet force uh, which is a T-34-85 a Lendlease Sherman and a Su-100 tank destroyer that's my three tanks there um, now I've decided to go with a medium quality crew for the um, T-34 which is 22 points. The Sherman I've gone for a, a low quality uh, crew which is 15 points so that makes 37 and then for the Sioux uh, I've gone for medium again is 24 points which uh, I think adds up to 61, 61 points. Um, so up against it I've gone with uh, two uh, fearsome German vehicles. I've got the Tiger One and a Jag Panther, um, mainly because the Jag Panther I painted ages ago and I just wanted an excuse to use it. Also, it gives me a chance to see with turret versus turretless tanks what happens. So it's a classic game of quality versus quantity. Uh, if I take both of these German tanks as medium, the Tiger is 25 points and the uh, Jag Panther is 33 points gives me 58 points so the Germans are actually three points down uh, compared to the J Russians so we'll see where the quant quantity over quality plays out um, I've set the cards up um, as they suggest so let me just show you with the Russian tanks here so uh, vehicle identification G um, and uh, um, a G to go with the tank itself now obviously because I'm using different tanks that's not so important um, doesn't matter particularly uh, because I can always tell which are which but it does in terms of targeting so you also need a little targeting token uh, to correspond with the ID so that's targeting G and targeting G which you put alongside the card also alongside there is the um, binoculars crossed out uh, token which I believe means that they're concealed so we'll keep that there and then the buttoned, uh, uh, opened or buttoned up for the commander, which will go on there when we decide how we're playing out. In addition, um, I've also uh, put a smoke grenade in each of these and loaded up according to the ammunition that they have. So they've got AP, HE and special. Okay, made a food part already, so um, I got it wrong with the eight uh, special rounds for the moment. So... Um, where it says HE2, the 2 is a value of the HE, not, uh, not that it's got two shots. You basically have unlimited HE and AP as a standard ammunition. Special is handed, handled specially. Uh, on the Sherman here, I don't know whether you can see it, hopefully you can, it says AP, HE2 and smoke. 
um, so it can't use special ammunition um, but it also as well as the spoke smoke grenade it can also fire a round of, sh of smoke out of the main gun and uh, the Su-100 tank destroyer has AP um, of uh, AP and HE of three, no special, no smoke, only the smoke grenade. So that's what we've done there. So now we need to dice for how many special rounds uh, you have within your unit. So this is dictated by the period we're playing. So I'm saying this is mid 1944. Uh, for the Russians, that's a zero modifier. So we roll just one d6. Whoops get a lousy one so that basically means they've got one round of ammunition of special ammunition to put out across their um, platoon um, now obviously none of the other tanks can carry it so that automatically goes with the t 3485 we'll do the same with the Germans now because it's 1944 late uh, mid-war sorry and they are running low on supplies they have a minus one determinant so they've got uh, the Tiger one can fire all rounds. Um, let's just take that, off, take the AP off, a special round off. Sorry. So the uh, Jag Panther can fire AP, HE, and special rounds. So we'll just take the special out of the way. So for the Germans, because uh, its uh, supplies are tricky, it's a minus one on their die roll. So they rolled a four, uh, which means it's three. So they have three rounds of special ammunition. Um, now you can only, I believe each tank can only carry two as a maximum. Um, so um, I've got three, I'm gonna put two in the Tiger and one in the Jag Panther. So that's that sorted. So now we're gonna do the cruise. So if you remember, I went medium, medium and um, poor with the uh, Soviets. So we go into the rule book, there's a chart there that says um, to put your dice roll according to the, the quality. So let me just show you this. So here we go. Um, the Soviet T-34 is a medium caliber crew, which is this one. So it's basically dictated by the overall crew of uh, quality of the crew. So we roll a dice according to this, roll a two, which isn't so good. We get five stars to, to um, distribute. So five stars, so we could do two, two stars on the commander, two stars on the gunner, and just one on the driver for that guy. So that's their commander, so it means the driver is a green driver, not very good at all. So we'll move on to the uh, the Sherman, Lendley Sherman. Now that one starts as poor quality, uh, low calibre. Rolled a four, which gives me four points to distribute. So for this one, I'm going to go, um, just to try something different really, I'm going to do one on the driver, one on the gunner, and two on the commander. There we go. Uh, so that's pretty poor. And then the Su 100, he's an average quality. Roll it for three for him, uh, gives us five points, the same as the T 34. So, what I'm going to do with this fella, I'm going to go um, three points. For the uh, no, I'm going to go three points for the gunner and one point <laughs> for each of the other two. That may be daft, but we're trying the game out, right? So, so there's my uh, there's my Russians ready. We've got uh, the T34 has a commander who is a two star, the gunner is a two star, and the driver is a one star. Uh, they've got uh, AP, HE, and one round of special ammunition. They've got a smoke grenade here. Um, and it is tank G. Uh, the Sherman um, has a level two commander, a driver um, star one, and the gunner, sorry, gunner star one and driver star one. Uh, the Sherman carries AP and HE and smoke rounds, but no, spe no special rounds, and has a smoke grenade. 
in the hold and then the Su-100 uh, we've got the commander is uh, a star one and the driver is star one but the gunner is a star three um, and they cut start with an AP and an HE round and a smoke grenade that is it so for the Germans we've got the teeth uh, sorry got the Tiger one um, he is uh, average rolled a five for him so five on average is six points to distribute so um, maybe we'll go let's do three stars one star and two star how about that see what that plays out so we've got a, a driver who's a, a, a sorry commander level three gunner who's uh, stars two and a driver that stars one so uh, for the jag panther oh a six uh, which on the average is a seven um, so we could do three for the commander and two and two I think maybe that's the way to go there two for the gunner and two for the driver so that gives them a total of uh, three, four, five, six, seven, which is what we rolled. So there you go. So the Germans are now complete. Uh, the Tiger has a, a Star 3 General uh, Commander. They have a Star 2 Gunner and a Star 1 Driver. They're loaded up with AP round, uh, HE round and two special rounds. They've got their smoke grenade ready. Um, and the Jag Panther has a level three three star commander uh, and two star driver and gunner they have an ap and an he and a special round and then smoke grenade so there you go that's uh, that's the cruise set up um next up we'll need to choose cards okay so um next up we're going to do event cards um but first up just uh, point out the command um, markers here so uh, there's uh, forward card forward tokens left turn halt reverse and uh, right turn we'll get to how they work but basically each vehicle will need one of these beside it one of each of the set so we'll do that when we deploy it um, but just so you know what they're for so we've got the event cards um, variety of these would given them a good shake a good shake good shuffle um, now the rules dictate how many of these each side gets and it depends it's determined by the number of total number of vehicles in play um, both friendly and enemy so for this game there's five tanks which gives us four cards each side so we'll just dish them out randomly one two three and four so that's the event cards sorted. Now they're held in the hands uh, and get replenished. So this is the Soviet one. Uh, Soviet ones, they've got teamwork, which is a commander skill. Um, perform when of your tanks performs a tactical action. Your tank may perform an extra tactical action during its combat phase, during its action phase. Weak spot, that was one I showed on previous things. So this is a gunner skill lucky shot has found a vulnerable area basically it means you've got a much better chance of penetrating if you hit charmed life either by luck or by experience the crew managed to get themselves out of sticky situations play when you fail a crew test and then unto the breach there's another gunner one the, the tank's gunner effortlessly reloads when you're performing a load main gun action the gunner may make a forced load automatically without having to do a crew test the gunner is allowed to take a forced load even with a very heavy gun right so that's very useful set of cards i think so i'll put them down and then the germans uh, they also get four cards so they've got quick reaction uh, which i think was one we showed before i showed in the pre or when i was showing off the cards I um, uh, don't think it's exactly the same. So this is a commander action. When an enemy is about to commence a main uh, gun firing action uh, on one of your tanks, the commander of the target tank 
must make a crew test. If the test is passed, the target may perform an immediate fire main gun action against the tank about to shoot it, if possible. This shot suffers the penalty of moving and shooting. So basically you get to fire first if somebody fires, but of course you've got to have a shell loaded in the breach to be able to do that. If the enemy tank survives, it continues with its own firing action. Uh, uh, your tank's interrupted shot does not affect the number of other tactical actions the tank can perform that turn. So it's basically an extra response. Interference. Enemies' radios are playing up. Play during the re reveal initiative markers step of the first action phase of the turn. Uh, effect has once all initiative markers have been revealed, may, you may reallocate your opponent's initiative markers amongst their tanks. Then charmed life, um, we've got that for the Soviets as well. So basically, gets you to re-roll a um, crew test, and then bad day. Play when your opponent passes a crew test and makes them re-roll it and they have to take the second roll. So that's the German cards sorted. So next up we're going to choose assets. Right, so the assets are distinct cards for each nation. Um, I showed some of these before and they all have a point value or star value. So that's one, that's two, that's three. Um, so we work out how many um, assets we have. Um, now again, it's dictated by the number of tanks in the game. Uh, there's five tanks, which gives us a D6 plus one on the roll. So we roll for the Germans, they get six stars worth of points. So now we have to decide what we're going to use from this. I think we'll have to take tank hunters because that's worth two points. Now these can only de be deployed when a uh, reinforcement event card comes up. So um, just be aware of that. Uh, might take a sniper, because that might keep, keep the enemy tank commanders down, buttoned up. So that's three points. And should we take uh, another tank hunter Thing, which is another three points. That's our six points spent on the Germans. Then for the Soviets, we'll do the same. They get D6 plus one, so they get four stars worth of troops, of things. Oops, Becky, get out of here. Thank you. Uh, so they could have a... F uh, maybe we'll go... Should we take close assault? Molotov cocktails rain down on the invader. And we'll take the 45 millimeter anti-tank gun that's that so there you go um it takes a little bit of time to set up but i think once you know what you're doing it should be fairly straightforward so we're ready to play the game um so um i'm just set up the table and um i'll come back and uh, lay it out and tell you how we're going to play the game right so we're all set up um and i'm going to play uh, mission one which is armored clash which is basically a straight up uh, fight between the two sides so you place eight pieces of ambush terrain around the battlefield um, each player starts with a tank within six inches of the base um, this is the short base most of the missions seem to fight across the uh, length of the table which is interesting um, reserves are optional um, but I'm not playing with reserves for this victory VPs uh, basically for destroying or crippling uh, enemy tanks is the simple rule. So I diced to see who went which side and it turns out the Germans are this side. Uh, they've got the Tiger there and the Jag Panther there. Uh, you can see the cards beside them. Um, I've also marked up the ambush. So the, <laughs> that Tiger, if an uh, ambush potential comes out, uh, there could be a little bit of trouble. But yeah, it is what it is. So that's ambush there, ambush there in this wood, ambush here in this ruins. That building there has an ambush. These two ruined buildings here have ambushes. This building here, ambush, and that building there, ambush. So there's, uh, that gives me the eight they suggested, I think, if I remember, if I count that right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, that's right. And then we've got the Russians over here, 
Uh, we've got the Sioux 100 on this flank, um, and the Sherman and the uh, T-34-85 over towards the other flank. Um, I'm starting with um, the two Soviet tanks over there buttoned up. This one, as befitting the, the model, is uh, unbuttoned and the two German tanks are also unbuttoned. So um, the way this works, whoops, now I'd say mistakes will be made. Um, I'm going to get that in straight away um, because it's a fresh game and all that. So, um, and I've, I've watched one game played online so far um, and actually had a word with, uh, talked about it with um, Martin Seventh Son because I know he played a game the other day and may well be up by the time this one goes up um, and um, we talked about loading of guns uh, and also some of the event cards because um, there seems to be uh, a bit of question marks around when to play event cards when to play ambushes that sort of thing um, also I saw somebody else playing this game and they uh, allowed uh, tanks to put one in the load bucket and one in the ready but bucket so effectively they had two shells up the spout and that just seems wrong to me uh, but I can't see anywhere in the rules that say you can't but I'm going to play it that um, in this game everything comes on unloaded um, and you have to load into the load um, slot and then on into the uh, uh, ready uh, slot to be where you can fire because um, it just feels wrong to me to have two in the spout effectively so that's how I'm going to play it so the way the priority is, is chosen is with the number markers that we have um, just get some dice that would help right um, so first of all we need to do radio checks so we are in the action phase at the moment so radio checks are national based so for German, um, so German trained commanders, so you, you rate it on the highest commander you have in your tanks. Both of these German tanks have trained commanders, um, and so you basically roll a D6, and if they can see each other, it's a lower value. So here we go, uh, where you can see this. Trained commander for German is a 3 plus, if they can see each other, if they can't see each other, it's a four plus. They can see each other quite clearly, so it's a three plus. They rolled a five, um, so that's fine. So if the if they are in radio contact, then you can choose which way round to place the chits. So that's the way it works. For the Russians, um, similarly, they are all in. Just about see them all lined up there. They are uh, all lined up um, and in view of each other. Now Russian radios are not as good, so they are a 5 plus. Um, a 6 plus if they can't see each other. So 5 plus for them, they can't see each other. Uh, they don't make radio contacts. So what that means is we'll randomly take out three counters for the Russians and we'll just place them beside the tanks and I can't look to see what the Russians have got. The Germans, I can look. So they've got number one and number four. So it's my choice now where to put. So I'm gonna go one for him and four for him. Obviously you have numbers associated with number of um, uh, vehicles. So there's five vehicles, so we've got chits from one to five. So I know that it's going to be Tiger first, then we're going to have to wait for two Russian tanks, but I don't know which ones, and then it'll be him. So that is, uh, at this point you can decide whether you want to be buttoned or unbuttoned, I've already done that, so we won't worry about that. Um, and then we can start with the first action phase. Right, so I just moved the cards around this side so I can actually see everything together. Um, so we know the order of the German tanks, so let's have a look at the order of the Russian tanks. So this Su-100 gets number three. KV, uh, sorry, the T-34 gets number two, which means this guy must be five. So there you go, that's the order of priority for the next two action phases. So, um, yeah play out two action phases each time 
Uh, right, I think we're ready to go. We've got the, um, the turn counter here. Um, this is marking minutes. Now, games are played in... Um, well, the way they suggest missions to run is for a number of minutes. Um, we'll get to that at the end of the turn. But basically, they're saying for this scenario, it's 35 minutes of game time. Uh, simulated game time, that is. So, let's get started. So, it means it's the Germans, uh, first of all, to move with the Tiger 1. No. I've got that wrong. So first of all, what we need to do is determine what the uh, actions of the tanks are going to be. And you do that by putting the little markers down. So remember it is um, uh, forward, back, halt, left, right is the way that works. And I've lost the right for this guy already. I don't know where that's gone. All right, never mind. So I'll put them all on the, all the different tanks. Now, you, the, the important thing with this is you don't have to um, do it, but if you've said you're going to move and you decide not to, you, you're classed as moving for any effects. So that's the way it works. So I'll do that and I'll come back. Right, so we're into the first action phase here. So um, starting with the Tiger 1, he's uh, active tank number 1. And you can see I've put a, a forwards order with him. Now his speed is five, five inches. Um, so I can do anything up to five inches. There's no requirement to um, uh, to state how far you're going to go or anything like that. You just decide you want to do five. So he's going to trundle forward five inches, trying to get away from that ambush terrain just in case there's anything there. Now. He could attempt to fire on that uh, if he wished to. So he's moved forward. Um, he is, uh, at the end of his movement, he's allowed to try and do a pivot for free. Um, and that is based on the ability of your driver. Now his driver is only a, only a one star driver, which means I'd need a four, five or a six to allow me to pivot. On this occasion, I don't think I want to. Uh, also, at the end of movement is when you determine uh, where the turret is facing, um, which could also be very useful. So I think what we might do with this is we can turn his turret that way. And now we have his tactical move. They're effectively tactical moves are um, uh, um, generally actions of some sort so you can attempt to do a pivot um, you can attempt to do a scoot which is basically a bit more movement you can attempt to pop smoke from the, from your smoke grenades fire machine guns at an enemy tank clear ambush terrain load the main gun unload the main gun spot the target aim at aim at a target or indeed fire the gun so in this case, I think what I'm going to do is try and clear that ambush terrain beside us there. Just because it looks a bit dodgy to me. So um, the commander basically is a bit nervous about what's going on in that wood, just in case there's some partisans there. That's what this is symbolising. And he's going to spray the woods with some machine gun fire. Now here's a close assault value of two. You roll basically the number of dice according to the close assault value. So uh, I rolled 2d6, I need a 6. I rolled 6 total, <laughs> but um, that's not good enough. So effectively nothing happens, that ambush terrain is still there. If I'd managed to do 1-6, I would have turned the ambush marker over to say cleared, and therefore it couldn't be used. So unfortunately that's it for the Tiger, um, and... Um, We'll move on with uh, number two. So number two is my T3485. You can see I've chosen to do a left turn with him. He has a speed of eight, of uh, seven, sorry. Um, so, for him, um, I want him to come up behind this building. So you can turn at any point in your turn, um, so, and up to 90 degrees. So I'm gonna do the turn at the beginning of the move and he's going to move his full seven inches forward to there. Um, not going to change direction of anything else, but what he is going to do for his tactical action, 
is going to move an AP round into the load slot and that is him done. Number three uh, is the Su 100 now this fella is going to, um, he's got a, a straightforward move um, and he can move eight inches, it's pretty rapido. Going to come down to there and likewise he's going to load an AP round into the spout. That is his actions done. Number four is the Jag Panther. Number four is our Jag Panther here. He's given us forward order. Um, he has ooh, he has a movement of seven. So you can see there's a certain degree of national characteristics or vehicle variation, not only in the armor but also in the speed. Tiger's notoriously slow. Um, so seven inches gets him down basically to there. Um, so the Jag Panther's gone there. I think he's going to load. He's going to load. Um, do you know what? I think he's going to load an HE shell. There we go. Because he's got quite a lot of potentially bad terrain here that he's going to have to go through. Now, of course, the challenge is. If I was playing this uh, against an opponent, I wouldn't tell him that I loaded HE because then he'd be tempted maybe to pop out with one of his tanks uh, and fire. So I'd keep it quiet what I'd actually loaded. Um, so that's that. That is uh, the uh, Jag Tiger done, Jag Panther done. So finally, so finally we've got our um, M4 A2 uh, a tank, um, he has a speed of 7 and I'm giving him the order just to move forward. So 7 inches further forward to there. Um, and he's going to do, as his tactical order, he's going to do a scoot order. Uh, which basically gives him a movement base, base boost. Uh, you roll 2d6 and you take the highest result. So he gets two threes. So it gets an additional three inches. There we go. And that is the end of the first uh, action phase for turn one. So you can see here, we've done one, we move it across to number two. This is still turn one, so the priority order stays and we go back to deciding what movement the vehicles are going to do. So I'll be back when I work that out. Right, so we're back uh, with um, the second action, well, yeah, second action phase of turn one. Uh, my tiger, as we know, is number one. He is going to continue with moving. Um, now, basically, he can only use those machine guns on the terrain when he's within six inches of the enemy target. And looking at the rules, it appears that uh, most of the ambushes happen within six inches. So he's just going to try and get moving and get away from that terrain as quickly as possible to there um, and then I think he's gonna swing the turret round back to forward back to forward you know what I mean um, and what's he gonna do is his tactical his tactical he's gonna do a scoot so he's gonna try and move a bit further forward so he rolled two dice again, Ooh, he gets a six and a five, so he can move six inches further forward. And that is his turn one completed. There we are. So as we know, number two is our T-34 over here. He's done another left turn. Really positioned him badly at the beginning of the game, didn't I? Um, so he is going to attempt, well, he's going to turn first of all, so he can do that because he's got that. His movement is, uh, oh gosh, what was it, seven inches. He's not slowed by these this difficult terrain because, or rough terrain, because he is a, um, a tracked vehicle. So he gets to there, and then I think what he might do He's going to, as an action, he's going to move 
the AP shell that he's already got loaded into the ready position. So that means if he gets an opportunity to fire, he can. Uh, the Su-100 is number three. He's got a straightforward move. So we will move him up to eight inches. And he's going to crest this hill and get into a potential firing position like that. Actually, it should be straightforward because he didn't have any turn on him. Uh, so he's in a hold down position on the hill and he will also move the shell that is in uh, load into ready. So again, he's ready to fire. Tank 4 is our Jag Panther. He is uh, being given a halt order. So he's going to stop where he is. He's going to stop where he is, and uh, which means he doesn't do any, tactic, any movement order. And he's going to attempt to fire. No, he's not. He's going to pull the shell into the ready position. And he's ready to hot. So that is it for turn one. Quiet turn. So what we do now is basically take, uh, do an admin phase. We remove all the, the speed mark or the, the priority order markers, um, etc, etc. And we shuffle them back up again. Um, if you had any, if I'd spent any of my um, event cards, um, you'd be able to replenish them up to the maximum of four in this case, because that's how many we started with depending on the commanders the highest commander you have in your um your tanks rating so my commanders are three stars so i believe i can take up to three replacement cards um so that's that um so i'll just do that and i'll come back right, so i've cleared up all the um uh numbered markers now we also need to work out how much time has gone by um, so th this is quite a clever little rule so if um, the way it does where it happens is um, if you are basically the players take alternate dicing to see how many minutes have gone by um, it's your choice to use one or two dice uh, and the result is the number of minutes that gone by but remember this this uh, scenario is 35 minutes long um, so obviously if you roll two dice Time goes by quicker, uh, potentially, if you roll well. Uh, it also allows, if if, uh, if reinforcements are coming on at a certain point, um, it allows you to get to that point quickly, which I kind of like. So it suggests you start with the attacker, but in this case, we're both attackers. So we're going to roll a dice. One, two, three, it's the Russians get to roll first. So it's a Russian choice. They're quite happy at the moment. There's nothing untoward, so they're just going to roll one dice. So five minutes have elapsed. So we have 30 minutes left for this scenario. And that is the end of turn one. Uh, we'll start again on turn two. So again, we need to determine who's in radio contact. So at the moment, uh, the Germans can see each other just about through that wood or through the hedge line there. Um, so they need a four, uh, sorry, three plus which they rolled, so they are in radio contact. So I'll take two counters, and we'll have a look at those. One and five. <laughs> One again. Which means the Russians get the rest of them. Now the Russians, they can see each other, so that's a good thing. But because their radios are rubbish, it's five plus for them. But this time they can. So that's quite useful for them. So they get the other three counters. And they can determine which way around to do it. So um, we also decide at this point who wants to be buttoned up and or unbuttoned. Um, and I will come back when I've put out the priority and also um, with the first turn. Right, so I've done, uh, I've placed uh, the priority one on the Tiger, uh, the five on the Jag Panther. I've also selected their commands for the first turn. Now, I have got a card here, which is uh, I could have used for the Germans, which is interference. 
in which you play during the reveal markers step of the first action phase of the turn. Once all initiative markers have been re revealed, you can reallocate your opponent's initiative markers amongst the enemy tanks. It's quite fun. So basically you can change the priority. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not overly bothered about that uh, in terms of what's going on here. So uh, the Russians, um, they've put the number three on the Sioux, the number four on the uh, uh, T-34, and the number two on the Sherman. So, and I've also done their activation or their command rolls. So it means we're starting with the Tiger. So we're starting with the Tiger and I gave him a forward order. He uh, has a speed of five. So he's gonna just trundle forward, whoops, to there. And I think we might try and do a little pivot based on his uh, crew, um, his driver. Now his driver is only a four um, he's a one star driver, so he needs a four, five, or a six. So he doesn't get it, which means he can't do the free pivot. Um, he's going to move uh, to there. Now, for his action, he's going to try and do a, um, I forget the wording of it, fast load. Basically, it allows him to go put a shell straight through the breach uh, and straight into the load position. So, to do that, um, he needs to roll on his gunner's skill. His gunner is three, so he gets a six. So that allows him to, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use one of the special rounds. He's gonna put that straight into the breach. If he'd failed, um, because it's a heavy gun, it would have stayed unloaded. If it was a medium gun, it moved to the load position only. Um, so it's a risky move to do. So there we go. So that's the end of the Tiger's move, but he is loaded. Number two is the Sherman. Um, he uh, was given a forward order. So he's gonna just advance to there. Now, he can just about see that Tiger down there, just via, via that tree. So he's going to turn his gun that way. Now he's not loaded, so he can't fire anything. Can't even do a snapshot. Um, but it does also mean the tiger next round might be able to get a pop off on him. So he, um, what should we do with him? So basically, you have uh, your best chance of hitting anything. You need to spot it first, obviously. Other, you, otherwise, you can only do snapshots. Um, so the way this works is you can spot a target for free if your commander is unbuttoned. Now, unfortunately, my guy is not unbuttoned, so we'd have to do it as a tactical action. Given the fact he's in the open, he's unloaded, um, and he's got a Tiger 1 sort of pointing at him, I think that's probably not the best thing to do. So instead, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and do a free pin um, uh, pivot action. Again, its driver is not great, he's a four. So he fails the pivot action, which means he can't turn. So what am I going to do for his uh, actual action? Do you know what, I'm going to... His gunner's a uh, uh, one star as well, so um, mm, tricky. I'm going to try and um, automatically load the gun. So ram, um, ram the shell right into the breach and ready. So he needs a four plus, which he gets. So the Sherman is now fully loaded with an AP round. And that's the end of his turn. So that was number two. Number three is the Sioux, Peggy Sioux. So at the moment, you can just about, I don't know if you can see whether I can get low enough, you can just about see the tiger through those trees there. I'm gonna say the wood where the Jag Panther is, um, 
in front of is not um, blocking line of sight it's an open wood it's like an orchard so he can see the jag panther are there so the Sioux has decided not to move he's got a halt order his commander is unbuttoned um, so he can take a free test for the commander now the only trouble with his commander he's only a one star gen uh, one star chappy however he rolls a four so he does spot the panther jag panther so we put his corresponding spotting marker on the target so we know that he's seen him then i think for his action he's going to aim at that target so we're going to change that to an aim so he has a bead on the Jag Panther, he's loaded and he's aiming. So that's the end of his turn. So number four on the activation is the T-34. Um, that has um, a forwards movement order. I don't know what I've done with the tape measure. So forward order, he has, as remember, a speed of seven. He's gonna move about there then he's going to try and pivot uh, that is a uh, driver of uh, oh, it's only a level one driver you can see where the skills come into this so he's going to try and do a free pivot using the driver's skill four which he gets so then let me move the camera down here and you can see the aim is to turn like that so he's seeing a tiger one straight down the alleyway there now that was a free pivot because he passed his driver test so he is now lined up in front of that uh, tiger now the only problem is he is buttoned up so this is where buttoned up makes a big big difference um, so he needs to spot using a tactical maneuver which is not ideal but he has to be able to do it to be able to see the tank to fire at so he's going to use his tactical order to spot the tiger doesn't need to dice for that because he's using the tactical so the tiger has been spotted by tank G and that's the end of his activations next uh, will be the Jag Panther so the Jag Panther is here he has uh, an order to be halted he's got a um, HE shell in the breech or in fact it's uh, fully ready to fire so he's gonna fire his HE into this orchard here to try and clear that maybe I'm being a bit overly sensitive with the uh, with the with the German tanks but there's only two of them so I don't want any kind of sneaky ambushes to take them out um, so he has uh, an HE value of two so he gets two d6 needing a five or a six he doesn't get it so fires the shell hit nothing important even if there was anything in there and the, as a result he's now empty that's how the mechanic works and that's the end of phase one action phase one of turn two so we'll move on to action phase three now the order again is determined already so we just need to put on the commands what they're going to do movement wise so i'll be back once that's done right so we're ready to go with uh action phase two of uh turn two uh first up is the tiger now he has been spotted by the t-34 um but i'm giving him a menu a move order because i want to get him away so he's not going to get potentially the uh the sherman coming the other side so he's going to move um he only moves five inches so he's going to come forward to about there which hopefully gets him away from the view of the sherman you can see that 
um, and that is his movement. Now for his uh, tactical, he has a shell loaded. He has a special round shell loaded. And so first of all, what he needs to do is be able to spot the, the T-34 that's across the way there. So he needs to be able to spot that T-34. Now the German commanders are not bad. I've given them good ratings. I think it, it clearly the rating abilities is really important. So he's going to try and do a free commander spot. His uh, driver, his commander is unbottened. So he is a three star commander, which means he needs anything but a one. So he spots. He spots the T-34. Now he's now got his tactical order. And he is going to fire. Going to fight the T-34. Have the German have the Russians got anything they can No. There's nothing the Germans the Russians can do about it in terms of their cards. So we'll we'll work straight through to the to the effect of this. So um so the prerequisite, obviously, ammunition is ready in the ready box. It is. We've got a we've got a, a special round in the box. He's got line of sight to the enemy target. He clearly has. He's got a targeting marker on the target, um, which he has, um, and the target is within the front arc of the gun turret, which it is. So all those are fine. So we work out. Um, Right, so let's have a look at this. So the range, uh, basically there's no maximum range in this, but there is a minimum range. So we measure the range between the two tanks is just under 18 inches. Um, so 18 inches is actually short range for a 88 millimeter gun. So we are needing five plus to hit at that range according to his chart so because he spotted uh, the T-34 he would normally have two dice but because he moved he drops to one dice so he gets one dice needing a five or a six to hit he doesn't hit so the shell is expended which means we lose because we used a special ammunition that's gone for good it's been fired he's now empty and he loses that shell Maybe not the best thing to have used in the first round of firing, but hey, I'm trying out the game, right? So that is it. So that's uh, the Tiger's activity done. So we move on to tank two, which is the Sherman over here. Now the Sherman has been given the order to advance. So it's going to move forward seven inches to that. It's just about got us. Can just about see the uh, the tiger on the side there. We'll attempt to. I think we we'll attempt to spot. Might as well. It's a fr it's a freer action for him really. Um, he is, but he's a buttoned up commander. So that would have to be an activation, wouldn't it? I think. I think he's going to try it. So he's going to do it as a as an activation. So that is a tactical move. He's now spotted the tiger. Like that. So I'll put that on top. So the tiger's been spotted twice. And we'll attempt to do a pivot uh, with the uh, Sherman. Now he is a driver star one, which means a four, five, or a six. He fails to pivot. So his gun can turn. You can just about see the the tail end of the gun of the of the enemy tiger there. Now the way the spotting, if you can see any element of an enemy tank, even the gun barrel you can attempt to spot it. However, you can only fire when you can see 
a part of the hull. So you can't just fire at the, the, the gun. <laughs> so, but there you can clearly see, I think you can clearly see, that Tiger's uh, rear area, um, or the back end of the side there, is visible to this, t to this Sherman. So, that is not so good for the Tiger. Tiger's in a little bit of problem there. Right, so that is that. Uh, that's the Sherman done. Next one is our Su-100. Now he's on top of this hill. Uh, he's targeted the uh, Jag Panther. Uh, he is also um, not moving. He has an AP round loaded, so he's going to fire. So he is spotting. So because he's spotted the enemy, he gets two dice. He doesn't lose one because he doesn't lose one because he hasn't moved. He's trying to let me put it on the chart. So here we go. Explain it better. So uh, he's he's targeting the enemy target, enemy um, Jag Panther, it gives him two dice to roll. It's at long range. He needs a five plus to hit. Um, he doesn't lose anything because he's not moved or anything. So he need he's got two dice to roll needing five or six. So two dice, needing five or six. He got one six. I don't know whether you can see that. Ugh, probably not. There you go. One six. Five and he got a six and a four. So he has hit the Jag Panther that's all the way over there. Um, over here. It's a long range shot. So we now need to see where the target is hit. Now, given the fact this guy's got a load of terrain in the way, I'm going to say it's effectively hull down. Um, so which means you've got to now dice for location of the hit. It's coming into from front armour. We roll a d6, roll a 2, which is hull. So it hits the Jag Panther on the hull. Um, the penetration value of uh, the Su-100 with AP is 9. The armour of the hull of a Jag Panther is 14. Wow. Um, so there's a difference of 5 in the favour of, uh, of the German tank. Okay, so that's how it works. Right. Sorry, I just read the rule again. So basically, when you're determining where it hits... Let me show you on the chart. Whether you can, whether you can see this. So I don't know whether, the, whether this shows up very well on my iPad. So you're doing the hit location. Uh, the Jag Panther has a hull down value of 4, which means you take 4 off your die roll. Um, so you roll uh, a d6 to determine location. If your score is equal or less than the target's hull down, then the shot actually fails to strike the target, is effectively hit by the the rubble and the terrain. So because we rolled a two, that's less than four. <laughs> I know that. Uh, which means the shell, unfortunately, hits one of the trees here and doesn't continue to hit the Jag Panther. So unfortunately, that means the uh, shot is wasted. Drops back down to uh, being empty again. So that is the end of the Su-100. So we're now on to the T-34, which is the next tank in priority. Um, he is loaded. He's got a round up the chamber. He's got halt. So he is going to try and fire back at that Tiger. He's spotted him, so we know that much, which means he gets one dice to fire. Um, now he could... The fact the Tiger has now fired at him means he could just say, right, I'm not going to rush the shot, I'm going to aim properly. And I think that's what he's going to do. So he's going to change, going to use his tactical move to change, oh, I can't reach it, over to aimed, which uses up his tactical manoeuvre, but it does mean he is fully aimed in on that Tiger and ready to fire. However, the Tiger will get first move. Hmm, so maybe that's not the best idea. Do you know what? We're going to go for it. So, no, screw that. Change my mind. We're just going to fire the shell. 
So we'll only get one dice. Um, he's needing five plus to hit. We know it's short range. He hasn't moved, so it's just the one dice and fails. Rolls a three, so it misses. So again, the T-34 expends his ammunition, drops down. It's an AP round, so it automatically goes back to the uh, ammo rack um, and is ready for next go. So that is the uh, T-34 complete. So we'll move on to the final tank, which is our Jag Panther. Uh, he is, um, what is he going to do? He's unloaded. Um, he's spotted by that Sioux. I think what he might do, well, he's got a halt order on, so there's nothing I can do for this turn. So the, the uh, Jag Panther is going to try and spot the Sioux on the hill. His commander is a three-star commander, which means two plus. He rolls a six, so he spots that. So that's a free action because his commander is exposed, unbuttoned. So um, he's going to attempt to force, he's, he's got halt order on. He's going to attempt to force the gun to load, the gunner to, um, to load. Uh, the gunner is a three plus, he rolled a three, so the um, ammunition goes straight into the ready slot, ready to rock and roll. So I think that's the end of turn of the second of the first phase of second turn. So we'll um, go back to doing the command orders for next one. Right. So that's the turn over. We are uh, about to go into turn three. I think it is. Um, so I've taken the uh, command or the, the priority initiative tokens away. Um, it was German, uh, Germans first of all um, decided how many minutes have gone by so it's now Russians I think they're just going to roll the one dice as well so four minutes have gone by so that pushes up to nine minutes on the turn schedule so uh, we're into the next turn we'll choose uh, we'll see who's in radio contact so uh, the Germans uh, can see each other through this uh, these tree line so they are uh, Three plus, wasn't it? Three plus. So they are in radio contact. The Russians, however, they can't. Well, these two can see each other, and possibly this one and the Sherman can see each other, but they can't all see each other. So they're they're out of a line of sight. So they need a six, which they do not get. So they are not in radio contact anymore. So we'll just take out the the pieces. We'll put one beside each of the Russian tanks. The Germans get the remaining two, which just happened to be three and five. Oh, that's not so good. So we'll go hmm, three on the Tiger and five on the Jag Panther. Let's have a look at what the Russians have got. Remember, they didn't know. So they've got two on the Sioux, a one on the uh, T-34, and a four on the Sherman. Okay. Hmm. So I think what the Germans are going to do is they're going to play one of their event cards. This is called Interference. During the reveal initiative markers step of the first action phase of the turn, all initiative markers, and once all markers have been revealed, you may reallocate your opponent's initiative markers amongst the enemy tanks. So basically, we can shuffle them around. Now, I don't want the T-34 to go first. So I'm going to move and put it with the Sherman instead. So the Sherman's now got first move. I'm going to make the T-34 fourth in the in the priority um, so that burns that card I don't think there's any way the Russians could stop that so that is it so we'll start then with um, uh, setting out your orders for the tanks for this turn right the end of uh, the action uh, activation phase I've also ordered both of the Russian commanders uh, to um, unbutton because clearly having unbutton crews is kind of important <laughs> so 
um, I'm going to do that. So that is uh, the setup done. So we now have order wise, we have the um, uh, the Sherman has the first maneuver, then it's the Sioux, then it's the Tiger, then it's the T-34, and then it's the Jag Panther. So the Germans could be under the cosh here if anything happens. So we've got the, the, the Sherman up there in the top of the board, first of all. Um, I have given him a halt order, um, and he has already spotted the... Um, the the tiger he is going to try and target the tiger now i think it's probably a sensible thing with his tactical order so uh the it's a three plus to do that he gets a three so he has targeted so move the token to a, a target scenario um, selection which is here on the back so we know it Tank E has a target on this Tiger. Um, and he is going to then, because that basically uses up his uh, act, tactical actions. So I'm going to use a, a card here, which is this one. Teamwork, which is a commander skill. When one of your tanks performs a tactical action, your tank may perform an extra tactical action during this action phase. So he's going to play that, which will allow the Sherman, having aimed, to now fire at the side armour of the Tiger. He's, arm he's loaded uh, with an AP round, um, and he has a side shot. Uh, just about, can you see through that? Let me go the other side. So you can see just down there, he's got a side shot into the Tiger. Uh, it's over 18 inch range, um, he has a targeting shot which gives him three dice, um, he hasn't moved, so there's no negative for that, he needs a 5 plus to hit with one of those dice. Just managed to roll it where you can't actually see it, he rolled a three, two threes and a 5. So he got one 5 which is all he needed. Um, you don't get multiple hits, it's just you roll multiple dice to, and you qualify with one of them. So he's hit. Hit the Tiger on its side armour. Now the only trouble is it's a 75mm gun which isn't great. His penetration value is at that range is 4. The Tiger's side arm. Oh, we're going to do location first, haven't we? Let's get it in process. Get it right, Dom. Get it right. So we're doing for location. We roll a 3 which is the hull. So on the chart here, uh, a side shot, three or four is into the hull. So we've hit the tiger in the hull. Tiger's side armour is a nine. The 75 millimeter at that range is a four penetration. So that is five difference. So we roll a d6. Uh, which pushes the 4 up to a 7, which doesn't even equal a 9, so it fails to penetrate. So, unfortunately, even though we got a side shot into the Tiger, didn't manage to penetrate at that range. That 75mm gun is not uh, powerful enough to do it. So, he will go back to unloaded, and that is tank one finished for now. So the next tank in priority is tank two. Um, that is the Su-100. He fired last go, so he's unloaded. Um, he is um, he's aimed at the, uh, did we lose aim? I don't know, I need to check whether you lose aim once you fired at it. I don't think you probably do because it's still in line of sight. Anyway, the Su isn't loaded. He's not moving this turn. So all he's going to do is um, load AP into the load slot. That's all he does. So tank three is our Tiger. Now Tiger's feeling a little bit um, put upon here. Let's just say. You just see him there in the trees. Um, he will... He's got a, a move order. Forward move order. Not going to move that far, but he just wants to get away from that side shot 
that the Sherman's got. So he's just going to move up to the edge of that building there, which means he's no longer spotted by the by the Sherman, which means they lose their spot. That comes off. And the Tiger is not loaded, so he is going to attempt to um, forcefully load his gun. He's a two-star uh, gunner, so we need a three plus. He gets it, so now he has rammed a shell straight into the barrel. Uh, he's using a standard AP round this time. Learned from his mistake wasting, and uh, he has finished his turn. So that is tank three. Tank four is our T34 here, um, eyeing each other up across the uh, crossroads. Uh, T34 has also got a halt order, but he's also unloaded. He's going to use this card, which is Unto the Breach. When you're performing a main gun action, your gunner can make a forced load automatically without having to take a crew test. He's automatically loaded. He's going to try a special round, because I think he might need it against that Tiger. Uh, so he's loading up a, a special round. Now, because he used a card, I think that means he's still got a tactical action to go. So he's going to try and fire at the Tiger. I may have got that wrong, but since they didn't actually do an action, it was a card activation. I think that's probably right, but I uh, could be wrong. So I'm learning the rules. So um, the T-34 is going to fire a special round at the Tiger. It's under 18 inches away. He hasn't moved. Uh, the, he's only got a, a targeting on the you know, I say could I'm thinking do I change it into an aimed shot rather than firing because he's got a shell in the round it's a special round but now the tiger's loaded as well so this is this is where it gets a bit interesting does uh, does Ivan um, just fire the shot and only get one shot or does he try and target in which case he'll get two dice to roll if he aims at the tiger meanwhile he's going to get a shell back because the um, because the tiger has its moves first uh, I think they're gonna to have to take the shot he's gonna no he's not he's not he's gonna he's gonna I'm um, decisive here he's gonna uh, change so his tactical order is actually to spot or oh, sorry aim at the tiger and that uh, we'll see whether that was a sensible move but that's what he's decided to do so he's loaded with a special round he is um, uh, fully aimed in on the tiger just got to survive the tiger's shot at him so the last tank for this activation phase is the Jag Panther. Jag Panther had a halt order. Um, he's loaded. He can see the Sioux who's up there on the hill. Now the Jag Tiger, Jag Panther, sorry, when he's spotted, when he's got a target on someone, he gets two dice to hit. When he's aimed, he gets three. So given the fact he gets two already, I'm going to fire. He's just going to fire straight at this Sioux. Now the Sioux is on the hill, so therefore hull down. So there's yeah, there's a chance that the shell won't hit, but we'll do the shot. He gets two shots from there. It's long range, um, so it's five pluses to hit, and he misses. So unfortunately, good effort. Two fours, and now the Jag Panther is unloaded. I feared this game might be a bit too sort of slapdash, you know, it's like bang, 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 and everything's dead. But actually, <laughs> if anything, it's quite hard to hit things, which I kind of like, kind of like a bit. So that is, um, that's the end of activation turn one. So we move to activation turn two, um, and we'll do the menu, what commands they're going to do. Right then radios um so the russians can't see all their tanks so they need a six to connect with the radio they rolled a two so they don't have any radio connection so we'll just randomly assign tokens for these the germans are in radio connection so they need a three so they are in radio 
what have they picked up this time they got a one and a four so that one has to go on the tiger and four on the jag panther let's reveal what the german what the russians have so the sioux is number two sioux is two the t-34 is a three which means the sherman is a five so nobody's got anything they can interfere with there. So we're doing uh, manoeuvres now. Right, the only other thing to decide is does anybody button up? I think they're all going to be unbuttoned for the moment. Um, so we'll move on to action phase two. Um, priority is obviously with the Tiger. The Tiger has decided to move. Um, so he is going to just advance a little bit. Again, just trying to get away from that Sherman coming down the other way so he's coming up into the middle of the crossroads here up against the T-34 um, he is fully loaded um, so I think he's gonna fire it's the only thing to do at this stage um, he's gonna fire he has um, has a target on there um, He's, sorry, spotted that, that guy, so that would give him two dice, but because he's moved, he loses one of those dice, so it's one dice to fire. He hits, though, with a five. A five is a hit. Um, now, the he's only firing a normal round, but it is at short range, which is nine. Let's see where the penetration happens. It's into the... Uh, four is the hull so it hits the T-34 in the hull this time T-34 has an armor of 10 the um, 88 millimeter has a penetration of 9 rolls a 3 so that means our total is 12 versus uh, 10 which is a plus 2 on the penetration chart um, so if I manage to penetrate by plus two, we roll a d d6, a one or a two, and the T34 is toast. He is, he rolled a two, so the T34 is destroyed. However, <laughs> remember we picked up this uh, charmed life. No, we didn't. Uh, we picked up the close shave. Close shave. Miraculously, the shot passes clean through the tank. As soon as one of your tanks is destroyed, which it is, you play it, the tank instead receives a glancing blow, so is not destroyed. See page 43 of the book. Right, so that's a very, very useful card to have in your back pocket. So let's just check what the rule says. So basically what that means is that becomes a damage rather than a kill. So uh, luckily for the T-34, because it was hit this time in the hull, um, if it had been hit again in the turret, that would have been game over because that would have been two damaging hits to the turret. But as it is, he's now got a damaged hull and a dam damaged turret. So we'll mark that up. The uh, Tiger is now unloaded. But he is going to use that other card that he just picked up, which is Fog of War. So, uh, gun smoke and dust thrown up by tanks' tracks obscure the view. So you can place a smoke marker. No, it's not. It's going to place it on the enemy T-34. That's probably better. So we'll put the T-34 covered in smoke. Probably all the dust and grit that got thrown up by that massive 88 going straight through the hull and not touching anything vital. <laughs> Very fortunate for the uh, for the Ruskies there. Right, tank two is the Su-100. Su-100 actually decided that he's not enjoying sitting up on the hill, not really being able to do anything, so he's gonna try and also cram in on that Tiger. Um, He's got uh, a right turn order. So he's off and running. His movement is eight inches. Just move that tree for the minute. Comes down to there. And then he's gonna right turn like that. 
Now he is loaded, so he doesn't need to do worry about that. So he's going to do a scoot order. Rolls another five inches further forward to get to there. So I think, I don't think, he can now see the rear of the tiger. So he's going to try and spot him using his automatic spot. His commander's um, out, so he can try, but the commander is only a one star. So he needs a four plus, so he doesn't manage to spot him. They're too busy worrying about what's going on um, to, to, to worry about uh, being able to spot. So that's that. Um, number three in the priority is the T-34 that's now covered in smoke and has got a hole right the way through its hull and its turret and is beginning to wonder the wisdom of going against the Tiger. Uh, but it's okay. Um, so he's got a reverse order on him. Um, and he's not loaded. So I think what we're going to do with him is going to reverse back to there. Doesn't like the way that everything's getting so close. And he is going to try and forcefully load the gun. Um, his gunner is a two star, so he needs a three plus. So he does, so he has loaded the main gun, and that's the end of his turn. Uh, tank four is the Jag Panther over here. Jag Panther is loaded, uh, he's got a halt order on. Um, he can see the um, you can see this Su-100 over here. Whether that's a frontal hit or not. Probably is a frontal hit if he fires at him. So he's going to fire. It's two shots because um, he's because uh, he's got a spot on him. Needing five pluses. Gets double six. So it's definitely hit the Su-100. His penetration is nine. However, uh, the... Um, uh, the Sioux is uh, hull down because of all the cover intervening them. The Sioux has hull armor. Well, let's see where location is first. Rolls a four for location. So on the hull, that, that would be a hull hit. Uh, and actually... Yeah. Okay, because the Sioux is quite a low silhouette tank, has a hull down value of four which meant our uh, targeted shot was a four, so the shot actually hits the terrain and doesn't hit the Sioux, which is a bit of a bummer for the, for the Jag Panther. So he is now unloaded again. So that is uh, tank four finished. So tank five is the Sherman up the top there. Um, so he has a... Uh, a left, a left turn order, he's unloaded. Just see him at the back there. So he is going to, so you can do seven inches, whoops. He gets the edge of that marshland there, and then he turns at that point. Can't quite see. Uh, you can see the, the rear fender of the, um, of the, uh, Tiger, but not enough to fire at him. Um, so we will attempt to load the gun, I think. So we're going to do a forceful reload. Um, he's a four star gunner, uh, sorry, a one star gunner, which is a four plus to do it. So he fails, but because it's a medium um, gun, he goes to loaded rather than unloaded. So I think that's turn five completed. So we're, we'll move to action turn three um, and um, determine what commands they want to do. Right, this is getting exciting, I think. Um, so I've done the uh, command orders. So we'll start with tank one, which is the Tiger. Um, I've given him a move forward order. He's unloaded, however. Um, Basically, he's trying to get around away from all these tanks that are circling behind him. Um, he's got a bit in a bit a bit caught up here. So he only has a five inch move, so he's gonna move forward oh, five inches. Basically gets him to about there. 
um, and then he's going to attempt to oh, you can't see him there can you just round that tree let's move the tree a little bit um, and he is going to attempt to do um, he doesn't really need to pivot there so I think he's just going to stay there he's going to try and um, load up the tank uh, the gun gunner well that does it so he has loaded a round into the chamber ready to fire tank two tank two is our Sue um, now he's going full tank destroyer mode he's loaded and he's got a right turn order so he's going to try and get on the uh, on the trail of the tiger so he's doing he's going forward to there and then he's going to turn like that and he's presenting his side to the uh, jag panther but he's relying on the fact there's cover between them so uh, so that's his first maneuver well that's his movement he's already loaded I'm thinking he might pop a smoke um, out the side there, throw some smoke grenades. Each tank has smoke grenades, so he's going to expend his smoke grenade and throw some smoke out here to block the view. That's that. So that's tank two. Tank three is the T-34. Now the T-34 now the T-34 decided to stay where he was, um, rightly or wrongly. Uh, now the way smoke acts, it disappears automatically if you move. If you don't move, you roll a 1 or a 2 and it remains. So I rolled a 5, so the smoke dissipates. Posh word there. Um, he is loaded. He is fully aimed, so and he's about to go down if he doesn't, so he's going to fire at the Tiger. He gets two shots. However, the Tiger is going to play this card. Quick reactions. Your commander reacts to the enemy by firing first. When an enemy is about to commence a main gun to action, which is what the T-34 is about to, uh, you make a target test. If the test is passed, you can perform an immediate main fire gun action against the tank about to shoot you. You suffer the normal movement penalties for moving and shooting. If the enemy tank survives, it continues with its own shot. So there you go. That's a really, really nasty card. Um, that can no, it can't be cancelled. So we need to do a test for the German commander. He is going to roll against his uh, command rating, which is two plus. He rolls a one. He rolls a one. So it fails. <laughs> that was the only result. The only result. And I haven't got any of those re-roll capabilities left. Have we used it? No, nope, I've got nothing I can use. So unfortunately, that beautiful card is expended, and the uh, and the T thirty four gets to fire anyway. So the T thirty four is fully aimed in. He gets two shots because he's aimed. He's firing at short range, needing five pluses to hit. He gets two hits on the tiger. Well, it's only one, but he hits the tiger. Let's see where the location of the shot is. It hits a three, which is the hull. Hull of the Tiger. T-34 has uh, penetration with normal calibre shell. It's 8. The Tiger has a frontal armour of 12. However, I'm going to play the Russian card here, which is weak spot. The gunner, when, your shot, when a shot by one of your tanks hits a target, the effect is, when determining whether your shot penetrates the target armour, roll 2d6 instead of just 1, and add the total of both dice to the penetration. Wow. So that is useful. So we're rolling 2d6 plus 
the 8 for penetration. So we're adding 5, so we're at 13. Frontal armour of a Tiger on the hull is 12. So we've penetrated. Penetrated by 1. So we're rolling a dice. A 1 destroys it. Oops, that's a cocked dice. A 2. <laughs> so it just damages the Tiger. So the damage, the, the, the T-34's shell slams into the hull, doesn't quite go through, well it goes through but doesn't destroy the tank in the process, so it just causes damage. So the Tiger has now taken a hit, so we'll mark that one with a hull damage marker. Wow, that was, that was epic. The cards are great, I love these cards, they're brilliant. Um, so that is that. I think playing a, an opponent, a physical opponent, that's going to make it really fun. So we've done turn, t uh, we've done uh, tank three. So tank four is our Jag Panther, who's back here. He's been a bit tardy, so um, he's got on the net and said, "I'm coming, Fitz, coming, Fritz, to help you." He's got a forward order, but he's not loaded. Um, so he is going to advance seven inches. Oop. Into there. So he's advanced to there. Um, he is going to attempt to force reload his gun. His crew, his, his gunner's skill is three plus. It's a four, so it's loaded. So he's ready with a shell in the spout, ready to go. That's tank four done. So tank five is the Sherman. The Sherman is coming down the road there. I've given him a left turn order, seven to there. He'll do a little turn like that. And I th he is loaded, I believe. Can he get a shot onto the rear? Well don't think he can because the the building is he can see through a window but I think that line of sight is blocked by that building so I don't think he can fire unfortunately um, so he will instead use a tactical order to uh, fully load his gun so now he is loaded and that is the end of that turn which has got very very interesting um, yeah, very interesting. Okay, we'll clear up, and in fact, before we clear up, we'll work out who's, I've forgotten whose turn it is to dice for. I think it's the Germans, for how much time has elapsed. They're quite happy. So five, five minutes have elapsed, so we're up to seven minutes. Uh, we'll take in the counters and uh, reallocate them. Back in a minute. Oh, I forgot the end of last turn, uh, the Sherman, because he's unbuttoned now, um, could attempt to uh, see the tiger. Uh, even though he can't fire at him, he can see him, or at least see part of him. So we're going to have a go at that. Um, the commander is a 3+, plus, but fails, so irrelevant. Right, so we've done this. We're up to next turn. Um, we've got the dice sorted, or the counter sorted out. Now the Russians can't see each other again. Um, so they're needing six to establish radio, so they do not. So we'll just randomly allocate counters for them. Germans can just about see each other. So they are a uh, three, I think it was. So they do spot. So they have a five and a three. Oh dear. Oh, also need to give out some new cards. So the Germans use two cards. So they've picked up mines. An enemy tank has blundered into a minefield. When a tank enemy tank executes a movement order using any other command than halt, you take a test. Wow. Okay. Um, and then extra reinforcements. When drawn, discard this. So you play this immediately, apparently. Um, discard the card and activate two a assets chosen from those you purchased before the game started wow this could be absolutely brutal let's just see what the russians get 
Russians get teamwork, which is which is a useful one, gives you an extra action, and they get bad timing. The tank stalls at the critical moment, which you can play on an enemy tank to stop it moving. That's kind of useful, but I think the extra reinforcement order has to be played immediately, it says. So what have the Germans got? Well, the Germans have got some quite useful assets to play. So these were the ones we bought, if you remember. We've got tank hunters, we've got sniper, and we've got tank hunters. So um, what we need to do, I think this is golden opportunity to utilize this. So I'm gonna try, first of all, use, I can only use two of them, <coughs> which is fine. So I'm gonna use tank hunter resolve an attack on an enemy tank within six inches of uncleared ambush terrain well there or there really uh, roll three dice needing a six so basically this is to simulate um, this is to simulate infantry jumping up and fire their Panzerfaust at the enemy so we get three dice so we're firing on this Sioux because it's within six inches of two lots of unfriendly terrain. This is where clearing the terrain made a big difference, if you can do it. But the trouble is you don't have enough actions to do that. So unless you have a bespoke tank that's sole job is to drive around clearing terrain, uh, which is a possibility. Right, so we need three dice needing a six. And we do not get it. So no effect. So that's a shame. That card is burnt. Could have been brutal, that. So the other card we decided to use uh, was the other tank hunter. So this time uh, an anti-tank rocket from a Panzer Shrek hurtles towards enemy armour. Resolve an attack on an enemy within six inches of uncleared ambush. Roll three dice again. This time it has less penetration value. So we're going to fire it uh, again against the Sioux I think. So three dice again needing sixes. And we fail again. <laughs> well, it was all great. I thought that was going to be brutal, and actually, nothing happened. Both occasions, the uh, Panzer Shreks and Panzer Fausts missed the Sioux. <laughs> so, that could have been very, very nasty. So, that's that. Um, that burns that turn. So, the, the Germans have only got one asset left, which is Sniper. So we'll just allocate the, th the orders. So the Germans have a three and a five to allocate. So I think they're going to put three on the Tiger and the five. Yeah, actually, no, I might do it the other way around. Oh, that's really awkward. Yeah, actually, we're going to do the three on the Jag Panther and we're going to do five on the Tiger. So we'll reveal what the Jer Russians have. So the Sioux is a four. The Sherman is the one, and the, that means the T-34 is the two. So we will work out what their commands are, and I'll be back. Right, so on to uh, action phase uh, two. Well, the first phase. Um, is anybody going to button up? I think they're all going to stay unbuttoned, um, because it seems like the best thing to do. So the T-34, uh, sorry, the... Um, the Sherman is order one. Um, the Sherman is order one. He has an order of a left turn. He's got one in the barrel. Um, but he hasn't seen anybody yet. <laughs> so he's blind as a bat, this fella. Right, so he's going to move forward. He's going to try and get behind the, sh the Tiger. However, the Germans are going to play mines so play when an enemy executes a movement action the tank's driver must make a crew test uh, if successful it avoids the mine if it fails it receives a track damage if it throws a one it basically gets two track damage all right uh, so the driver of that sherman is only a one star so he needs a four plus Oh, it's gone behind it. And he's rolled a five. So he's avoided the mines. Somehow, Fritz has gone, 
that mines. Oh no, wrong one. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Ivan has gone what mines? So he's gone to there and then he's turned so he's right up the backside of the tiger. There we go. Uh, right behind him. Right up the exhaust pipe, as they say. So he will, he's loaded. Uh, he needs to spot, however, he needs to spot the tiger. I'm not sure how he wouldn't spot the tiger, but he needs to spot him because he hasn't spotted anything yet. Um, he is, his commander, is, this, to do an automatic one, his commander is a three, uh, three plus. He rolls a two, which is a failure. Uh, so he's going to, the, the Russians are going to play Charmed Life, which means they get a re-roll. So he needs three. Rolls a five this time, so he does spot the tiger. Um, obviously he was too busy looking at his sandwiches or something, and he has now spotted the tiger. So now with his extra tactical move, he's going to fire. He has a shot in the, in the chamber, however he has moved. So he only gets one, one dice. It's a close range shot, clearly. <laughs> Couldn't get much closer than that. Oops, let's get him there. Couldn't get an awful lot closer than that. Um, so he needs to hit on a five with one dice. He hits, rolls a five, hits. So the 75 millimeter gun firing at that range has a penetration value of six. The Tiger Oh, hang on, we need to do location first. So where's the shot hit? Rolls a five, which from the side hits the turret. I think side and rear are the same on this. So it hits the turret of the tiger. Uh, tiger's rear turret um, is a nine armor. The gun has a penetration value of six. And we roll a five. So it's plus two. It's penetrated plus two. A one or a two destroys the tiger. No. So it's a hit on the hull, on the, sorry, on the turret of the tiger. Um, so the tiger's now got hull damage and turret damage. Uh, we'll need to dice for his commander because uh, he was exposed. So we roll the dice for that, he rolls a four. Uh, shaken. The commander must button up immediately. I'm not surprised. So he buttons up. And he's a little bit worse for wear, that tiger. He's got uh, holes in the hell, in the holes in the hull and also in the turret. Right, so that was tank one. So tank two is our friend the T-34 that's been drawing the attention of the tiger all the way through. Um, hmm. So the T-34 is aimed at the uh, tiger, but he's not loaded. So he's going to attempt to force the, re force the load on the gun, but he rolls a one. So that would be a fail. Oh, his manoeuvre was uh, to halt, so so basically because he's a medium gun it still goes to load rather than, but it's not in the breach. So basically that's him finished for this phase. So tank three is the Jag Panther back here. Uh, now he's got a halt order, he's got a shot in the ready position. Um, he can see the Sioux. He's already seen the sea, Sioux, but the trouble is the Sioux is um, in a hold down position, whereas now the Sherman is not. So I think he's going to try and spot the Sherman instead. Um, his command rating is uh, three stars, so he instead transfers his view to the Sherman. And he's going to use his actions. To, his tactical action to fire at the Sherman's 
rear. So it is three shots. Um, looks like it's probably long range beyond 18 inches. No, it's not. It's in 18 inches. So uh, three shots needing a five plus to hit. He gets a five and a six, so that's a hit. He's hit the Sherman in the in the chuff, so that's a, a nine on the penetration. Oh, we can see where the shot lands first. See where it goes. It's a five, which is uh, from the rear is a turret hit on the Sherman. The Sherman's turret has ooh, only five penetration. The uh, the 88 gun has a nine. So nine plus a roll of three um, gives us 12 versus a defense of six, which is six plus, which means instantly the, the Sherman is destroyed. He's blown up and that is the end of his game. Took a risk coming around the back, kind of sort of paid off because he managed to put, he could have taken out that, uh, that uh, tiger but instead presented his tail at, uh, exhaust to the uh, Jag Panther and the Jag Panther wasn't going to miss that one. And, uh, <laughs> and we get to put the flames down. There you go. So he is burning. Well, we'll work out burning and stuff like that. that in the campaign it makes an effect because there's a chance your crew can get out, um, in which case they can play on. But... Uh, uh, needless to say, the uh, it's not been a good day for the uh, for the for the Sherman. Right. So finally, the Jag Panther does something. Um, it is now unloaded, and we move on to tank four, which is the Sioux. The Sioux, seeing the threat coming from the other way, um, has decided to do a left turn. And all it's going to do is turn like that. And because it moved, the smoke disperses. Whoops. So you can see it's looking straight down the road at the, um, at the Jag Panther there. Um, he is fully loaded. So for his tactical action, he's going to... Well, first of all, he's going to try and uh, aim... Yeah, what he's going to do is trying to try and aim. He's going to use his tactical to aim at the uh, uh, Jag Panther. Whoops! Actually, I don't think he needs to do a tactical. He can just do it as a, a free action because his commander is exposed. He rolled a four. His commander is a four plus, so he's now aiming at the Jag Panther. Uh, that does use his tactical order. Sorry, I'll get this right in a minute. But the Russians have got. The, another dream word, dream work, sorry, another teamwork card, which basically gives them an extra action. So for the extra action, he's now going to fire. So he did move, but he is aimed. So it would have two dice, but because he's moved, he only gets one dice. So one dice needing a five. And he misses. So that was a failure. So that was the end of that activation phase. Quite brutal. We've lost the tank on the on the Russian side, but the Germans. Well, that Tiger is looking pretty damaged. It's got uh, it's got a damaged hull and a damaged turret, which is exactly the same as the T34 has. Um, everyone else is pretty much intact. Right, um, so it is action phase three. Um, I'll just work out what their manoeuvres are going to be. Right, so we're on with uh, the, the final phase. Um, we'll start with tank one. Well, that was the Sherman, but he's obviously dead. So we're now up to tank two, which is the T-34. T-34, um, actually, uh, maybe that wasn't the best move. He's gone with a halt action. Um, he's going to just load the gun uh, so it's ready to fire and I'm thinking we're going to use the emergency repairs 
uh, card for the for the Russians. So um, you're going to try and remove one of the damage tokens from the hull, I think. Whichever one I do, it'll be the other one that gets hit. So we'll do the hull. Uh, why not? Um, so we'll see what he needs. His uh, it's got to turn around. It's so it needs a four plus. Rolls a one, so it's a failure. So that is the end of his movements. Uh, tank three is the Jag Panther back here. He's got a halt order in. Um, he's unloaded because he took out that uh, uh, Sherman. He will attempt to force reload. Rolls a two, which is a failure, so nothing happens. He will try and respot the Sioux though instead because uh, the commander's exposed but he fails with that too so <laughs> that is that um, so that was three number four is the Sioux itself here he's got a halt order um, he's not loaded so he's going to attempt to forcefully reload his gun uh, he's got a grade three commander which he rolls a 5-4 so he manages to fully load his gun with an AP round. So that is at and then finally for now for this turn is the Sherman, uh, sorry is the um, Tiger. The Tiger has halted, he's buttoned up so we know that um, but he is uh, fully loaded so he's going to put a shot into the T-34 um, because he is uh, He's spotted, he gets two dice, needing a five plus to hit. Gets one, gets a hit. So the T-34 takes a, a massive hit. At the, where does it hit? This time, oh my goodness, it hits the, the running gear of the, of the T-34. Wasn't really what the Tiger wanted, he wanted to hit something else. Um, never mind. So the T-34's running gear protection is only six. Um, the gun has a penetration of 9 and a 4 makes it uh, 13 versus 6 ok so um, we more than penetrated the running gears values but it isn't a destroy when you hit the running gear it only basically cripples the tank so the running gear has been uh, knocked off so it cannot move it's basically the T-34 has taken hits to the hull the turret and now the running gear and is stopped where it is so that was uh, tank 5 finished and um, that is the end of the turn so that was a, a fairly exciting turn I think we go back to the next turn we've dice for how quickly we want this to finish so I think the, the Russians are feeling a little bit nervous. I think they're going to roll two dice for, pro, for finishing the turn. So they get seven minutes on the turn. So that pushes us to 24 minutes of the game finished. So we've got 35, uh, we've got uh, 11 minutes left. Uh, they're hoping that they can get the Tiger in the time that that takes. That's the plan. Right, so uh, we're up to the next turn, so I've taken uh, the, the tokens off. Um, this time obviously there's only four because the Sherman's dead. Um, so we're roll for radio. Now this time the Russians are still out of radio communications with each other, so they need a six. So they are out of comms, so we'll just randomly put one beside each of those two tanks. The Germans are just about in view of each other, so it's a three for them, but they fail. Um, so they can use this card uh, when you fail a radio check you automatically pass it instead so they might as well burn that which means they can look at what they've got oh and they've got one and two that's very useful so we'll put one on the tiger and two on the jag panther let's turn the others over three for that and four must be for the T-34. Ooh, so um, 
The Germans had previously burned two cards. They can't get one for that one they've just used because it's a new turn. So we pick up two new cards. We've got uh, improvised armor. When you're one of your tanks, increase your armor value by two against the shot. It's not effective against close assault or mines. They've also got reconnaissance. Uh, tank commander scouts ahead of his tank on foot to identify any positions. Any time you can play at any time, your opponent must reveal their event cards to you. You can exchange one event card from your opponent's hands with one of your own. Wow. That's very useful. So talking of that, the Russians, uh, they blew three... However, they've only got a two-star commander, so they can uh, only draw two in replacement. So this is what they've got. Uh, they've got Unseen Obstacle. A tank runs over hidden wreckage. When an enemy tank executes a movement order uh, using any other command than Halt, you must take a test uh, as though it's driving through ambush terrain. Um, and then Bullseye. Uh, when one of your tanks fires at a target, you roll a hit. You can re-roll any of the dice, or you can choose to re-roll location. Now, that's useful. So, um, Germans, they obviously wouldn't know what they've got, but I think we're going to use this card straight up. So we're going to use Reconnaissance. So, basically, the Russians have to reveal your cards, their cards, and I think... They're going to steal that bullseye card in exchange for bad day. So, unfortunately, that means the Russians lose that bullseye card. I like these cards. These are evil. Right, so we've done priority. Um, we just need to work out what the tanks are going to do for the first action phase. Back in a minute. Right then, uh, I've worked out there uh, what they're going to do. So the first tank is the Tiger. Um, he um, has got a halt, but he's not loaded. So um, he is going to force a reload. His gunner is a 3+. plus. Rolls a one, so it fails. And because it's a heavy gun, doesn't actually do anything. So that is the end of his manoeuvre. Uh, the Jag Panther is number two in the priority. He likewise has a halt. He's likewise unloaded. And likewise, he's going to force a reload. But this time he does. So he has loaded up an AP round. Do you know what? Just for lols, he's going to load up a special round. Because he's got one, he might as well try and use it. Uh, he will also try and spot the um, Sioux. Uh, because his commander is out the hatch, oh, everybody's out the hatches this turn. He rolls a four, so he does spot the Sioux. So he's reacquired him. Tank three is the Sioux. Uh, the Sioux uh, is also unbuttoned. He is, however, loaded and he is fully aimed on the Jag Panther. So he is going to fire. Um, so because he is a Sioux and he's aiming, he gets two dice. He needs five pluses. Manages to roll a three and a four. So it misses. So he is unloaded now. Next one is the T-34. Uh, T-34 is uh, basically his running gear has been destroyed. He's got a hole in the hull and a hole in the turret. Otherwise, he's doing perfectly well. Uh, he is also loaded, however. Um, so, he is also aimed at the Tiger. So, he is going to fire, I believe. Yeah, if I take that one off, because that's the, uh, that's the poor old Sherman. Um, he's going to fire an aimed shot at the Tiger. He gets two dice because he's aiming. Needing fives. He gets one five, so that is a hit on the front of the tiger. Where does it hit the tiger? It hits uh, on the hull. Now, the German hull has already got a hole in it, so this could be nasty. So, the, uh, the Germans are going to play that improvised armour card. 
so it increases the armor by two so they already have an armor on the front of the hull of 12 so that pushes up to 14 the penetration value of the gun is only eight but it rolls a six so that is a even which is a glancing blow so even though um, that was a glancing blow because it was on the same location where the tiger had previously taken a hit um, that's a second hit um, it, a glancing blow is just damage so that knocks out the tiger the tiger has been destroyed wow that t-34 has <laughs> had a lift lived the life of, uh, of pure that uh, t-34 has lived a charmed life um, I'm not quite sure how it's still in existence, but it is. And not only that, it's taken down the big boy, the tiger, despite the extra improvised uh, armour that the uh, German tank took. So that's another one burning. Um, and the T-34 is now unloaded. That was tank four, so that is the end of that action phase. So, action phase three, uh, which is the second turn, um, I'll do the manoeuvres and we'll be back. Right, so that was easy. Um, every, basically, we've only got uh, a T-34 that's lost its track, so it can't move, and everyone else is halted. So uh, we'll start with tank two, which is the Jag Panther. Um, it is loaded. Um, it's acquired the Sioux as a target. It's got a special round in the chamber. Um, it is going to fire. So, uh, it is a just a targeted shot, which is two dice, needing fives. Rolls a four, and a, a four and a one, so it's a miss. However, it's going to use bullseye. Final card in the hand. Uh, you can re-roll any or all your dice. So, I'm going to re-roll both of them. They need to take down that Sioux. This time, two fives. So, it hits the Sioux. So where does it hit the where does it hit? Uh, bear in mind that Sue is in a hold down position and a half. A one means that it plows straight into the terrain, and that shell has wasted. So that was not any good at all. Um, yeah, that's not good. Right, tank three is the uh, Sue. It's unloaded, um, and I think it will reload. It will try and, try and forcefully reload. Rolls a six, so it does. So it's fully reloaded, ready for action next turn. Next tank is the um, T-34, but it's had its um, running gear destroyed, so it can't do anything this turn movement-wise. So all it's going to do is attempt to force a reload, uh, which it does. And we're just going to have to hope that it pulls the card out that allows fixing because at the moment it's just immobilized where it is there and unless that uh, drag panther comes anywhere um, that's it so that's the end of the turn uh, this time it's the german turn uh, to decide how the game goes on i think they're only going to roll one because they really need to take down an enemy tank to have any chance otherwise they're going to lose this battle so they're going to roll one dice they roll a five which brings us up to Oops, let me move this around so you can see it. 29. 29 on the chart. So, probably got one more turn left, I would imagine. So, we're down to three tanks now. I was just going to say something really dumb, like um, how do the, the Germans must automatically know they're in radio contact, but since it's only one tank and they're only going to get one token, they <laughs> no choice of where it goes. So forget that. Right, so are the Russians in radio contact? No, they're not, because they've got a great big building between them. So they need a six. They do not get it. Uh, let me just shuffle these cards, these tokens. Um, so that one is that one, that one is that one, and the Germans get the three. So they, the German tank is going last. First one is two and the first is the Sioux. Right, the Germans have used uh, all their cards up. They have a level two uh, three-star commander so they can pick three new cards. So what do they get? They get hold, 
uh, your gunner is calmly waiting for the perfect moment to take the shot so you use it when you're firing um, the gunner takes a crew test result and it basically counts if you're successful counts again as the shot against the side of the enemy that's useful another gunner skill into the breach the gunner effortlessly re reloads so that's an automatic reload effectively and regroup uh, during the reveal initiative setup uh, you may reallocate your initiative marker amongst your tanks well we've only got one tank so that's pretty pointless that one right so onwards um all tanks have their uh, initiative uh, set out so the german tank is going to go last um first tank out the uh, order is the su 100 um it has a hold order so it's going to stay where it is it is fully loaded and ready to fire has it got a card that will help no nothing will help so it is going to fire an aim shot at the jag panther uh, which is sitting across the way there uh, two shots because it's aimed needing fives it hits where was the hit location six is on the turret well it doesn't have a turret so that's the hull um, and the jag panther's hull is a 14 on the front wow that's uh, pretty pretty pokey the 100 millimeter gun is a nine um, have we got anything we can increase that with no nothing at all so we rolled a five plus a nine is uh, 14 which is a glancing blow on the hull of the um, Jag Panther which is going to damage its hull pretty good roll actually for the uh, for the for the Russian so it's no longer loaded goes to empty um, and that's the end of its tactical phase uh, the um, next tank out is the T-34. Now the T-34 has lost its uh, running gear. Um, it is loaded, but it can't move, um, so it passes. Not really anything it can do with anything at the moment. It needs that card to come back out that allows repair. Now it's the um, that's the Jag Panther. Um, he isn't loaded. Um, but he has got a halt order um, so he's going to play into the breach which allows him to try and well, automatically loads the main gun without needing to do a test which is helpful so he's learned, learned, uh, loaded a round of AP um, and I think with the next one yeah it's going to fire so it gets two shots because uh, it's, it's spotted the uh, Sioux. However, the Sioux is in hull down position, which is what's saving it at the moment, to be fair. Um, I'm going to play another German card, which is hold. Your gunner calmly waits for the perfect moment to take the shot. You play it when your tank fires, which is what I'm doing. The gunner must, take, must make a crew test. If he's successful, the shot goes against the side arm if you fail it doesn't so the gunner is a three plus it gets a three so the result will be applied against the side armor of the uh, Sioux however we are hull down so let's see for location rolls a rolls a five the Sioux in hull down position is a four so that does hit it does hit the uh, turret well would be a turret doesn't have a turret so it hits there it counts because of that card hits counts as a side uh, turret hit which is only five on that thing the armor uh, and penetration is uh, nine so that goes up to eleven against five is six difference 
and with that is an automatic destroyed so the Sioux is destroyed and that empties the gun and I think pretty much finishes the game given the fact that the uh, um, the T-34 is immobilized I think we're going to call it there I'm going to call it uh, as a German victory although they lost their, teeth, uh, their Tiger, they did take out the uh, Sherman and also the Su-100 and they've immobilized the T-34 which would have to be abandoned um, head back. So the uh, Jag Panther survives the day just with a bit of a damage on its front hull um, and I'll clear this up and let you know what I think. So there you go, that was my first game of Actung Panzer and um, I really really enjoyed that more than I expected I thought it was going to be kind of fun because I'd read the rules um, and I thought you know it's got something to this but I really enjoyed it very very much indeed um, I can see this as a two-player game or even as a four-player game or multiple players you could imagine having a game where everybody had one tank each and controlled it um, would be hilarious and it it's funny, I was talking to Martin, Seventh Son, um, actually while I played this game, um, and he's played a game of it too, and we both felt it has a lot of similarities to Dead Man's Hand. Um, the sort of initiative thing, the sort of um, uh, interruptibility, the cards, um, make a huge difference to the game and make it terrific fun. Um, I really enjoyed that immensely. Now I know purists are going to say, "Oh, you know, ranges are so stupid." And nah. um, but you know what? Get over yourself. If it's a fun game, it's got historical flavour. It's very cinematic, like Dead Man's Hand, um, and I would very happily play this again and again and again. I could see myself playing this again and again and again. Um, I will take it down the club and see whether um, I can get Jonathan excited about it or anybody else um, because I think um, it'll be terrific fun and I am tempted to play the campaign game um, just to see whether I can build up some crews and play that out because what happens even if tanks are destroyed there's a chance the crew gets out and therefore they can uh, continue on their uh, on their recruitment journey. Um, the cards add a lot to the game. Uh, these cards are great without being overly powerful and I think that's the nice measure I like. Um, they're not overly powerful. Um, the assets I thought were going to be more useful than they were. Now I was very unlucky. I rolled 6d6 needing 1 6 and didn't get a single one which could have put paid to that Sue very early on. Um, but um, they're, they're nice. They're, they're kind of fun and one of the things I didn't actually do which you can do is, is you can throw if you don't use any of your event cards in a turn you can actually discard one or two and pick up some new ones so you can you know if you haven't got anything useful you can try and uh, rotate them around so which which is a nice option um one thing i absolutely adore and funny enough again martin and i were talking about this on the phone uh, the turn um something as simple as the when the game ends that is an absolute stroke of genius. I don't know why anybody hasn't done that before. So the fact that um, you, the players decide when it finishes by rolling the D6s, I think is great. So tactically, you can play, uh, if you think you're doing well and you're winning the scenario, you roll two dice and try and finish the game quickly. Um, I think that's brilliant, utterly brilliant. I think also when you add in uh, reinforcements coming in at certain points, it's in your interest to move the game along, um, whereas your other side might not want to, so they're only roll 1d6. I, I think that's a really, really clever mechanic, and I've never seen that before, um, and um, I think it's a good one. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. Uh, I know a lot of people I've seen, now it's just what a tanker. Now, I haven't played what a tanker, so, well, actually, I have. I played it once. If I'm honest, I didn't enjoy it. Um, this I enjoyed immensely. I think this was great fun. It's beer and pretzel, Marmite type game. I think some people will absolutely love it, some people will not. Um, but I think um, having played, I don't know how many turns that was, I think you could play this very quickly 
uh, once you've played a few turns it's quite in easy to remember the mechanics are very simple um, and it wouldn't take much to play a game uh, fairly quickly in an evening um, and then reset and go again for another game so anyway let me know what you think as i say um comments down below um share subscribe all, all that good stuff um and i will see you again soon this is dom signing out <laughs>